Today we're gonna to take a quick look at the new Mizuno Pro Iron for 2024 and give you my opinion on which one has performed best. Remember, if you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button and tell all your golfing friends. So here we have it, Mizuno this year launched the Pro Iron. Um, this is kind of normally a two year upgrade for Mizuno, so you're going away from the 225 range previously, uh, and we've got the three new models. So you've got the 245, the 243, and the 241. What's the main difference between the three? Well, 241 starts with the bladed head, the really kind of really traditional looking Mizuno head. Um, looks great very small market but is a, a, a kind of iconic piece in the Mizuno range. 243 and 245 are slightly different, they're more aimed at the golfer that wants that forged soft performance feeling iron but actually want a bit of forgiveness. Now 243 again a traditional type of Mizuno iron, they've done very well with this type of iron. I would say this has been predominantly their mass market pro series iron over the last few years really just being overtaken last year and or two years ago and then in this season with the next model which is the 245 so last year 225 was incredibly popular and then 245 this year has come out with an absolute bang this is kind of the hollow head this is the one that's going to go against your p790 it's an iron that is quite hot um, Loft wise, you're looking at 30 degrees in a 7 iron, so pretty strong. You can obviously tweak these and make them stronger and weaker as you wish. Mizuno also do the traditional lofts as well. Now, 245 is an iron that is probably, for me, has been the success story so far. It's appealed to a huge wide range of consumers. It's appealed to that high handicapper, but also more importantly, it's, it's played a part in the low handicapper's bag also. Because what you're able to do with this iron is you're able to blend it with the other two models. Now, if I bring up the 245 and the 241, from the outside, they don't look dissimilar. So you can see how easily that would be to put into a golf bag and you'd almost be looking like you're playing the same iron. So we've seen players put four or five irons, maybe even six irons in 245, and then blend them with the kind of sleeker looking 241 in that shorter iron. And that just is a player's preference. They might get a little bit more feel, but what you also find is the 245 is a hotter iron. It's gonna help you launch the ball a bit higher, a little bit more distance, and obviously in a longer iron, that's gonna be a lot, lot easier. However, when you get into that nine iron, eight iron pitching wedge, you don't really want a, an iron that is going to be as hot and uncontrollable in distance. And that's where the 241 can play. So these irons have been brilliant. Um, 243 is the one that sort of sits in the middle. We have seen combos with this, not so much. Um, you have got the really, really good players that love the blade. Maybe even put 4-5 iron in 243 and then blend with 241. But you don't really see too much blending 245 into 243. We've seen it maybe skip a beat and, and go into 241. 243, however, is a powerful iron. Loft wise on this, um, we're sitting at 32 degrees. So it gets a little bit weaker. Now that's the beauty with the seven iron lofts with these, is that they get about two degrees weaker through the iron. So we start with 30 degrees in 245, 32 in the 243, and then 34 in the 241. Reason for that is the player that is in 241 normally is going to be a more powerful player, hit the bit of ball a bit further, so can afford a little bit more loft. The other reason for that is within 245, if you put a 241 loft on a 245, because of where the weight is, because of how the club performs, the ball wouldn't possibly pop up a little bit too high, spin a bit too high, and not really gain you any distance, which if you're this type of player, that's kind of what you're looking for. So, in my opinion, most popular this year, and I think Mizuno would, would second this, has been the 245 iron. Second for me has been the 243. Obviously, 241 is such a small market, it's not gonna be the most popular iron, but it certainly is probably the best looking. So, let's jump in the bay and hit these irons and see how they perform. So, let's jump in, we'll start with 245. 
I've popped in here the Nipper motor shaft. I've got the 120 yesterday. It's as close as I would play, so it seems like a good point. So let's have a little hit. Now this is the iron that is going to give you the most confidence. You're going to need it if you strike it like that. Um, but it also is the iron that is going to give you or maintain the beauty of this iron is it does maintain the feel of a Mizuno and that's what where I think these guys get it right you know they, they absolutely 100% don't uh, sacrifice the Mizuno feel oh man they are two really bad swings let's try and get something a bit better for you on camera, let's give something a little bit. Bit more like it. You can hear that kind of nice softness off the Mizuno face. Lovely fly to it. When you do get this thing, you know, I've got carried that not great speed, but launch angle's fantastic. Um, land angle's always good with this, and you can see how that this, this ball does really go quite nice and high. Slightly thicker top line, it's the thickest of the three models, in my opinion. Um, frames the golf ball really well and just looks brilliant. So it doesn't look chunky, it looks sleek, it looks clean, um, and certainly feels like a Mizuno. Okay, so that's 245. Let's jump in and let's change that over to 243. So we'll unscrew the head here. Now. The 243. So I used to play Mizuno a while back, um, always loved their golf clubs. This would be the iron I would probably put in my bag. Not good enough for 241. I wouldn't really, I hit a high ball anyway, so 245. Um, I might, may t tinker with the idea of a long iron in it, to be honest, but 243 would be the iron that I would be straight in the bag at because top line looks clean, um, doesn't look too thick, looks really nice behind the golf ball. Um, and this iron, for me, just feels absolutely beautiful off the face. I think when you're looking at this type of iron, you know, we've had a few comments before that it, it's all about the numbers. Yes, it is absolutely about the numbers. That's going to guide your decision into which time of performance. But I'm still going to stick to my ethos, which is... If a player doesn't like the look of the iron or doesn't like the feel of an iron, that look and feel really ble bleeds and breeds confidence, right? So if, if I, can, I can give you the best numbers on the planet and you stand over it and you say to yourself, and, and you stand and over it and you can't stand the look of it, you don't like the top line, you don't like the colour, you don't like something, the first time you hit a bad golf shot on the golf course, you're going to lose some confidence with that iron. So um, I'm a big believer that you have to, whatever you put behind the golf ball, you have to like, like the look of. And on top of that, for 99.9% .9 of us, golf is a hobby, right? So I want to be playing something that I want to enjoy hitting as much as it performing well also. A little bit of forgiveness in there, a little thin, horrible number. Still gives me a little bit of forgiveness, which is helpful. I personally, I love the feel of this type of iron because for me it feels the most powerful. Um, distance has just jumped up a little bit. Um, I'm obviously swung it not as good, but that's fine. Let's hit one more, and then we'll hit that two four one. I haven't hit that very well at all. So, although I haven't struck that very well, gone away with it, but a super, super iron. I think it, 245 has out-muscled it this year um, so far. But I do think that 243 is a huge successful one. And sometimes, quite often, that middle, middle line, if you like, gets, doesn't get necessarily the plaudits that it should. In any range, not just the Mizuno range, but in any range. Uh, because typically what you'll see is the marketing's around the, what I would term as the hero product. So for me, their, their, techno their technology, their kind of uh, big stories all around 245. And 243 kind of comes in and under the radar a little bit. But overall, 
I, I'm a big, big fan of 2-4-3. So, 2-4-1. Now, this is the one we'd probably all love to play. Looks good. And to be honest with you, what they do very well, Mizuno, when they do produce a blade like this, is the top line doesn't look as scary as some other blades. And for me, it's not miles away from a, a, on the top look to the 2-4-3, which is surprising. Now... Feels beautiful off the face. You're just not going to get anything. Now you can see it's slightly weaker loft. Ball's popped up a little bit higher. Ball's gone a little bit shorter. If we can just change the screen there to give it the dispersion, you'll see it just pops up a little bit shorter. I mean, that was a really good strike as well. The problem you've got when you're seeing me test these and you know we have to caveat that is that although the lofts are weaker remember who's hitting them right so i'm pulling a few here they're going a little bit further through the air i'm not a robot i'm not even that good a golf pro so yes i can strike a golf ball but the consistency of the strike isn't going to give us a huge amount of it's not going to be clear enough maybe in that yardage gap but you can get a kind of sense that 241 is a bit shorter. You really have to nut it out the middle to get anything out of it. I mean, it's beautiful when you do hit it. I hit that really nice. But you can see the carry distance there, just that much shorter. I always feel like I have to, sounds weird, but I end up swinging smoother with a blade because I am trying to hit the middle. Oh, that's so bad. Out of the toe, just, and that's the drop off, right? That was such a bad miss hit. Now I hit some really bad ones with 245 and 243, and yet I didn't get the drop off of that. So yes, it's a beautiful iron. I can see where it has its place in the market. I can see how you would want to blend this in definitely the eight, nine and wedge. Um, but for me, it's a tough ask. So here we go, guys. The Mizuno Pro range this year, a super, super range. From my perspective, if I look down on this floor here, if I bring these iron heads up, they are a beautiful range. They look great, they're clean, they're slick. Mizuno do, this is their bread and butter, right? This is what they do incredibly well. 245 has definitely been the product that has sold the best throughout 2024 so far. So I'm gonna have to make sure that you, that, that is probably from a, commercial point of view 245 is the absolute winner and i think because of the ability to blend that you've also seen more of this in the market because it's been fixed within a 241 combo set or a 243 combo set but for me if i was if i was testing clubs today if i was looking at one of these for me the absolute winner for 2024 would be the 243 the one that sits in the middle my preference my feel my objective opinion would be that 243 would be the better iron. Guys, I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and tell all your golfing friends.